My name is Aaron Sidford. I'm a brand new professor in the Department of Management Science and Engineering. Uh, this is my first year here. And what I want to tell you about today is I'm going to start with a really, really brief overview of my research and what I work on rather broadly. And then with all the time I have, I want to go a bit more in detail on a particular line of research I'm really excited about and get faster algorithms for computing the stationary distribution. So my research is primarily in the area of optimization, and most of the work I do is on getting provably faster algorithms for solving large-scale optimization problems. When I say I work on optimization, I mean I'm working on the thing that you most likely are thinking of right now. I work on getting provably faster algorithms for things like regression and linear programming and stochastic programming. However, I also work on things more in combinatorial or discrete optimization and a variety of problems we tend to put in the area of classic algorithm design. So there are in computer science. And there I work on things like maximum flow, minimum cut, and some Osler function minimization. Now, as many of you know, there are very tight connections between these two areas. Indeed, the maximum flow problem is just an instance of a linear program, and some modular minimization can easily be cast as a convex program. However, I feel over the last number of decades, at least the theoretical study of these problems has tended to diverge over the last number of years. And each of the communities in sort of continuous optimization, discrete optimization, have each developed a whole host of tools for solving the pro these problems, but the tools have somewhat diverged. And I think this is a little bit of a shame, as I think there's still a lot of computational power to be gleaned by sort of carefully designing sort of continuous optimization methods and using at the rich space of iterative methods that continuous optimization research has brought, and combining this with the different types of representation for data and data structures and combinatorial techniques that have been found in the area of combinatorial optimization. So a lot of the research I do is on the boundary of these two areas, getting faster algorithms for continuous optimization and combinatorial optimization. And I usually work on studying these problems and getting fast algorithms under sort of modern computational constraints. So what I mean by this is usually when I'm trying to get faster algorithms for solving these problems, most of the time I am just trying to get near, uh, running times with, a, with trying to get as small a uh, running time as I possibly can. I'm trying to get running times as close to linear as I possibly can. Um, but I also sometimes work on more restricted settings where maybe you only have adversarial or stochastic access to the input. So that's the bulk of my research. It's on getting provably faster algorithms for these problems under the constraints that you face when you have large data sets. And the end result of most of this work is usually these provably faster algorithms. However, I should tell you that I think one of the reasons I particularly like this work or I like the study of sort of these classic canonical optimization problems is I feel these problems have been around for long enough and they're at the core of enough problems you find in various domains that often the only way you're really going to get a provably faster running time for solving these core canonical problems is to find some sort of new structural insight in large data sets. So if you're really going to get provably faster problems for this problem, Often these, these, that question serves as a really good test for whether or not you have found some new structure in large graphs or some new structure in large matrices. And the pursuit of getting these provably faster running times is sort of the test that you really have found new structure for you to exploit. All right, so that's broadly what I work on. What I want to do in the rest of this talk is tell you about a particular line of research in this area that I think serves as a good illustration of research on the boundary of these different research areas. So what I'm going to tell you about is about a particular project that's been the culmination of a lot of joint work with a bunch of amazing researchers at MIT and Georgia Tech. We've been working on for a number of years now, and it's culminated in uh, these two papers that reflect some really cool, I think, faster algorithms for solving um, a bunch of problems on directed graphs. So for the rest of the talk, the problem we're going to consider is the following fairly simple general problem you've all probably seen in some way, shape, or form. The problem is simply the following. We have some very large directed graph. So think here every node is like a web page on the internet, and there's an edge from one page to another if that page links to the other page. Or think these nodes are people, and there's an edge from one person to another if they communicate with some frequency. And the question we want to solve is we have this very large directed graph, and we want it much larger than this uh, simple picture would illustrate. And what we want to do is consider a very simple random process on this directed graph. We imagine the problem where we're at some node in this graph. We pick a random outgoing edge. We follow that edge to whatever vertex it points to. We pick a new random outgoing edge from that vertex, and we repeat. And we keep repeating this process of doing this very simple random walk on the graph. And the question we want to ask is if this, if this process converges, if this converges to some distribution over the graph known as the stationary distribution, can we compute the stationary distribution fast? So the problem we want to talk about is can we get fast algorithms for computing the stationary distribution? Now why should you care about this problem? Um, it's 
First, uh, it's one of the most fundamental problems in the study of random walks and Markov chains. However, beyond that, it's a problem that you encounter, I think, in a variety of settings. If you've ever looked at PageRank or personalized PageRank, that's simply a special case of computing the stationary distribution. Computing the stationary distribution is closely related to a whole bunch of other properties of random walks, like computing commute times, which is a good importance measure between vertices of the graphs, or hitting times or escape probabilities. Or a particular application I really like is that this problem corresponds, um, if you can compute the stationary distribution, it more or less gives you algorithms to evaluate policies and MDPs. So if you're considering the problem where you have a bunch of states and you have like actions you can take over the states that have some probabilistic transition, and you're going to pick some policy and you want to know what happens over time, or what sort of rewards you get when you follow the policy, computing this more or less corresponds to computing the stationary distribution. All right. So those are the reasons I guess you should care in general, but this is a vision talk, so I thought what I would do is tell you a little bit about why I care about the problem. This is sort of the general reasons you would care about this problem in general, but what I want to do is tell you why I'm particularly excited about faster algorithms for computing stationary distribution and studying this problem. And to tell you that story, I need to tell you a little bit more about what I think is a particular revolution that's happened in the design of fast algorithms, at least in theory, over the last decade. So this revolution goes under a bunch of names. A particular salient name that I like is the Laplacian paradigm. And what this revolution entails, what is at the heart of the Laplacian paradigm, is probably a very simple idea that probably most people in ICME have seen in some way, shape, or form. And it's just the following idea. Say on the one hand, we have a broad class of combinatorial objects we want to study. Say we consider the class of undirected graphs. So we have some n no node m edge graph with some non-negative edge weights, and it's a symmetric graph. Um, it's an undirected graph, so edges have no orientation. And on the other hand, we have a simple broad class of linear algebraic objects we want to study. So these are the set of Laplacian matrices which are simply uh, symmetric matrices, so matrices that are equal to their transpose, that have non-net positive entries on the off-diagonal entries, and have the property that every diagonal entry is uniquely induced by the off-diagonal entries. So every diagonal entry is equal to the sum of the absolute value of the off-diagonal entries in the corresponding row or column. So on the one hand, we have this natural combinatorial object. The other hand, we have this natural class of uh, linear algebraic objects that show up. And the way I've it up, it's not too hard to see. There's a very natural bijection between these two. If I think of, uh, if I take, make a Laplacian matrix by simply letting ledge ij be the weight of the edge from j to i, there's a very natural bijection between these two classes of objects. So what the Laplacian paradigm entails is this fact that there was this amazing breakthrough result of Spielman and Tang in 2004 that showed that if you want to look at these linear algebraic objects, it turns out you can solve linear systems in them in near linear time. And once you have this new primitive, you can feed this through an active area of research over the last few decades on spectral graph theory that has built a whole host of connections between properties of these linear algebraic op objects and combinatorial objects. And you can feed, uh, you can use the fact that you have nearly linear time algorithm to solve these uh, linear systems to extract information from these linear algebraic objects and use that to get faster algorithms for extracting prop combinatorial properties for graphs. So this has been an incredibly successful research program over the last decade, and for a rapidly growing list of problems on undirected graphs, um, the fastest algorithms we have all in some way, shape, or form use our ability to now solve Laplacian systems in near linear time or handle this linear algebraic property of a graph very quickly. I think one particularly salient example of this, um, we can now, uh, in using the machinery that's been was used to get near linear time Laplacian system solvers. We now have algorithms that compute the maximum flow problem, a very combinatorial problem on graphs in almost linear time in the number of edges, at least approximately. All right, so while this program, though, has been incredibly successful to get fast algorithms for undirected graphs, if you try to apply this machinery to get faster algorithms for directed graphs, here the best running times have, uh, have not been quite as satisfying. Progress has not been quite as great as it was for undirected graphs. So if you try to apply the Laplacian paradigm or all this new machinery that's been used to handle Laplacian matrices to directed graphs, it has not been nearly as successful at getting really fast, like almost linear time algorithms for solving directed uh, problems on directed graphs. Again, this particularly salient example of maximum flow, we do not have almost linear time algorithms uh, for solving max flow on directed graphs. The running times are much larger. And this is for a really, uh, for a fairly inherent reason. Um, it's not just, uh, you know, that we haven't maybe studied directed graphs a lot. If you try to take 
a lot of the combinatorial understanding or machinery that was used to solve Laplacian systems, and you try to translate this to get fast algorithms for solving uh, uh, problems on directed graphs, it's not too hard to see that a lot of the structure we use to get fast algorithms for undirected graphs simply doesn't hold when we try to look them at directed graphs. They don't compress or approximate nearly as well as undirected graphs do. So faced with this question, you might ask, okay, so how do we get around this? Perhaps the issue is at the start of the Laplacian paradigm. Perhaps the issue is, you know, the Laplacian paradigm was about this bijection between symmetric graphs and undirected graphs and symmetric Laplacians. Perhaps what's missing is a comparable, very fast primitive to extract information about directed graphs. Maybe we need a new, fast, nearly linear time algorithm that's better suited to directed graphs. Or one way you could think of this question is you could ask maybe what we should be looking for is some directed analog of Laplacian systems. Maybe we should be trying to build some new directed uh, Laplacian paradigm. Um, but if you want to try to follow this research program and now get faster algorithms or a better understanding of directed graphs, the first question you should ask is what's the right notion of a directed Laplacian? How would we extend this definition? Now, the way I rig this up, there's an extremely natural thing to try. You could try to do the same correspondence between undirected graphs and symmetric matrices, do exactly the same co correspondence, and just drop the requirement that we required that our graph be symmetric. So you could still associate every edge in your graph with an off-diagonal entry of a matrix, set the diagonal entries accordingly, and call that a directed Laplacian. It's an extremely natural canonical definition. Um, However, the first thing you should ask when you see this is, is this actually meaningful? Is this actually a good class of things to study? This is like a very natural analogous definition, but that doesn't mean it's actually a useful thing to solve. However, um, it's not too hard to show that if you build fast algorithms for solving directed Laplacian systems, or you could solve directed Laplacian systems, then whatever running time you get for solving that problem, you can use that algorithm to immediately get the same running time for solving all the problems we discussed in the beginning. So solving directed Laplacian systems is a problem that's harder than computing the stationary distribution, evaluating policies and MDPs, and computing uh, commute times on directed graphs. So this, for me, is the reason I'm particularly excited about the problem of computing the stationary distribution. It seems at the heart of trying to extend all this fast uh, algorithmic machine we've built for undirected graphs to directed graphs. So the problem we looked at was these equivalent problems. Can you compute the stationary distribution? Can you solve directed Laplacian systems and get all of these applications I discussed in the beginning? All right, so now if you want to try to solve these problems, um, uh, okay, so you want to try to solve these problems. Unfortunately, you still have these issues that I said that processing directed graphs is hard. And if you look at the state-of-the-art algorithms for solving these problems, they essentially fell into one of a few categories, the previous work. Either there were fast algorithms when the problem was fairly well behaved, so say random walks on the directed graph mix quickly or the matrix was well conditioned. There were also some fast algorithms uh, if you just wanted to solve the problem approximately. However, if you really wanted to solve the problem precisely with a good dependence on your error and a very weak dependence on how fast the graphs mix, basically the fastest algorithms we had until recently completely ignored the structure of directed Laplacians, ignored any graphical structure, treated them as solving an arbitrary linear systems, and correspondingly got fairly slow run times. Or you should think running times that are quadratic in the case when your graph is fairly sparse. So let's say like average degree polylogarithmic. Right. So what I'll tell you about in the one minute we have left and what I'm really excited about is uh, recent work, we, the work that we did was we showed actually you can solve all of these problems in almost linear time. Maybe this creates hope for this uh, program of starting a directed Laplacian paradigm. All right, so I'll give you, and what I think is particularly exciting about these results is not just that we solve these in almost linear time, but we had to tackle some of these questions of whether or not, to what degree director graphs have structure. So along the way we built some results that I think are of intrinsic interest. So in the first paper, first we showed if you want to solve uh, directed Laplacian systems, you wanted to process uh, arbitrary directed graphs, we gave a reduction that said it actually suffices to consider a much simpler set of graphs that's Eulerian Laplacians. These are graphs where um, the in degree is equal to the out degree. Right? And we gave this reduction that was fairly efficient. You could think this is either an uh, optimistic thing that says, ah, the problem is easier, we just need to solve Eulerian systems, or that solving Eulerian Laplacian systems was maybe a very hard problem. However, in that paper, we also gave an interesting proof of concept. We showed that you could solve Eulerian Laplacian systems faster than it takes to solve arbitrary linear systems. And we did this by more or less uh, showing that the problem isn't too far away from solving symmetric Laplacian systems. 
So it's a proof of concept that we can solve uh, things a little bit faster, um, that this problem does have some structure, but not the dream of almost linear time that we wanted. The second paper, we took things further. We gave a really fast algorithm for compressing directed graphs. We showed that although for many problems, directed graphs don't compress, for the sake of solving linear systems, they do. We showed how to do this in linear time. And applying this repeatedly let us show that you can very quickly build approximate inverses to Laplacians and solve systems in them in near linear time. I'm really excited about this line of research because I think it opens the door to a whole lot of study of questions about directed graphs that have previously been really hard to approach. Um, I hope this opens the door for solving a whole new broad class of linear systems, and I hope this is just the beginning of maybe the start of a directed Laplacian paradigm and faster algorithms for a whole host of problems on directed graphs. Thanks.